Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the b and I'm guessing Bruger and Thaumet, uh APC K9 Pro. Now, I've had a lot of people who have asked me to do a review on this thing, and we, were very, we have one of our viewers who is very generous to loan us a couple of b and uh, pistols so we can, we can bring them to you. Now, I recently did a video, and this video was uh, on the best uh, PCCs, in my, they were in my opinion. And I had a lot of people who had said, well, I should have talked about this one. And I did have this one at the time, and I wanted to pick four, uh, which I thought were the best. And they're saying, well, you should have had this one in there. So I guess I'm going to explain straight up why I didn't. You're looking at a $2,385 gun you see right here. Now, this is extremely well made. It's Swiss, and you can tell that it's Swiss. Um, it's got all the fit and finish that you could possibly ever imagine. Uh, very, very well put together. Uh, blowback with a couple extra features, which we're going to go over. And... Again, you have this this really really big price tag on here. Well, why did I put it in? Although this thing is extremely well made, fit and finish, we have to look at the reliability and price. Looking at the reliability and price, this doesn't stand out at all over any of the four that we looked at in the other video. Uh, so, looking at that, you have a standard direct blowback, um, the cost, and you know the performance of this was no different than than the Sig than the CZ and that of the, uh, the, even the Colt, they all worked. Being the fact this thing is proprietary in Switzerland, and the fact that you probably couldn't get parts here, it's very difficult to get parts for guns that are like this, it didn't make that, that, that list. That doesn't mean that it's not really a good gun. For somebody who really likes that Swiss technology, this is an awesome gun. It's very well made. This was uh, purchased by the U.S. military as a first submachine gun since the World War II uh, grease gun. They bought them in a relatively small quantities, you know, the U.S. military bought 350 of these, as well as the Air Force had bought some as well uh, as personal defense weapons. So it's certainly a, a good one, but the, the reason it wasn't put on there is I didn't feel that cost for what you got provided any better performance of those, those other guns. And it's very, performance was everything. I mean, you can you can buy a hammer for, te for five bucks uh, at, a, at a hardware store. It works. It hammers nails. No problem. Then you can go buy another hammer for, say, $75, polished, looks really pretty, nice machining and everything on it, but it's still going to hammer that nail. It's still going to work. And it's sort of how I, I viewed this, this pistol here was the fact that you have something very well made. It's expensive, very nice, but does it work any better than any of the other ones? And again, I look at, uh, I look at getting spare parts and I look at those kinds of things overall when I look at what guns that I would want. So not that there's anything wrong with it, this gun. It was just those particular reasons why I chose the four that I did. So I did, did want to address that. So now we're going to take a look at this gun. So we're looking at 6.7 pounds. Uh, it is a blowback operation. Uh, the biggest benefit to this over any other blowback out there is the fact that it does use a hydraulic buffer, which we're going to look at when we take this thing apart. You got a 4.3 inch barrel. It's a cold hammer four inch barrel. And we have the tri-lock on here as well uh, for using our suppressor. The suppressor that we put on here was the Pillum by Atlas Defense. So basically what you're doing is you're pushing in and rotating, and that gives you a lock on the on the suppressor. This is an excellent system. In fact, I think I'm probably gonna switch over to this on my uh, my CZ Scorpion because you have such a small amount of threads that uh, it does come loose. This one thing about this is it does not come loose. The upper receiver you can see here is uh, it's aluminum. Now the lower receiver is really interesting because it's uh, it's uh, it's polymer, but there's a few different ones that are out there. This particular one uses the Glock magazine. Now, the one the U.S. military bought, and probably the most reliable one, is going to be the one that uses the standard stick magazines that are made by B&T. And they also make one for the SIG P320 magazine, which obviously for U.S. military is important. Now, I want to address one thing straight off the bat with this. this the Glock magazines in this one does not lock back on the last shot. I had six different magazines, and not one of them would lock back on the last shot. That's one of the problems with, this, with the Glock magazines and all PCCs. Very few companies have ever been able to make one that works reliably for, for locking back. If I was to buy one of these, I would be utilizing the standard magazine that's used by B&T, which does lock back on the last shot reliably. But it makes sense for them to have lower modules that will work with their magazine, Glock magazine for commercial use, as well as the SIG P320. Working with the U.S. government, it would make a lot more sense to have a P320 magazine with you know, the fact that we're using M17s, M18s now. But even the U.S. government went ahead and bought the... Uh, 
uh, went ahead and bought the one with the standard uh, B&T magazine. So looking at the cocking handles, what we have here is ambidextrous cocking handles. Uh, and it is also non-reciprocating. That's one of the benefits of the, of the Pro is that it does not reciprocate. Lock, pull back. I actually lock back. That's pretty cool. It never did it when I was firing it. So, so it does lock back. Now looking at the right side, we do have a ambidextrous bolt release. We do have an ambidextrous magazine release. Now this is the first ambidextrous magazine release I've seen with a Glock magazine. So uh, that certainly is, is a first. We do have an ambidextrous safety on both sides. We have a top 1913 rail that goes all the way across the top. It does come with its own backup sights as well, and it's adjustable for windage on the rear and elevation on the front. And this came as a pistol, and the particular guy who, who loaned us this, he decided he wanted to go with the uh, pistol brace. So basically we have like an ACR type uh, retractable, uh, retractable side folding stock. And we have the pistol brace by HD Industries, which gives you the pistol pistol brace. This is probably one of the most common ones on here. Uh, quite frankly, if this was mine, I probably would have gone with a regular stock that was telescopic. Um, it probably would be the easiest one to go with, but if you don't want to go with the, uh, you know, with the SBR, this is uh, definitely an excellent option. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart and we're going to look at some of the, the internal parts. So for disassembly, we remove the magazine. Obviously, we're going to check to make sure that we're empty. We have two pins. You're going to drop one, two, and now we can pull our lower module right off. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the lower module. The lower module does use an AR-15 M16 type trigger. Now one of the things we want to take a look at on here is the fact that it does use the hammer trigger, but they were smart and they cut off the back end, which is the part that we now have uh, produced with the Centurion Arms. This feature is important to any PCC that uses a Colt type uh, trigger mechanism because when you have that hook on the back, that will smack into the disconnector and it will cause damage and will cause trigger slap and so on and so forth. They were smart enough to fix that on here. So y'all can go to the Centurion website and you can get this part at $35 uh, to, to upgrade all of your 9 millimeter uh, PCCs that utilize the Colt system. And use our code SAS10, you can even save an additional 10%. So looking here, we do have a very nice uh, grip module here for as far as the polymer is concerned. It's a very high quality. And again, this is Swiss. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So you can see we do have our, our bolt our bolt catch on here. And again, this one, it, it did not work once uh, with any of the ammunition we put through it. Now, I only put, uh, let me see, just about 200 rounds through this because, again, this was loaned by one of our viewers. So I didn't want to use, you know, you know, shoot the hell out of this gun. So uh, we did not have one malfunction other than all six magazines, failures to lock back. Now, another nice feature of the Pro is if you don't like this particular pistol grip, this takes AR-15 pistol grips. So... Say this was mine, I'd get rid of this immediately and I'd put a Magpul Myad on there because I put that on everything. Um, the trigger, because the fact that it is an AR-15 type trigger, is very nice. But this is sort of weird because it has a two-stage trigger to it uh, versus the standard AR-15. But uh, the trigger overall, you do have that, that creep on the first stage, but on the second stage, it's quite nice. Now we're taking the upper receiver. Just pull, push down and we're going to pull out. Now this is probably the biggest enhancement on this pistol or the submachine gun. You do have a hydraulic buffer that's built in. Now what this will do is it will give you a little bit less recoil. When you're dealing with a direct blowback, you have a very large chunk for a bolt which is used to, to hold that bolt closed while it fires to delay the opening. So when it, when it cycles, you have this big heavy mass that's coming back and smacking into the back of the receiver which gives you you know, relatively heavy recoil for a nine millimeter. Well, it's utilizing that system as well, but this takes some of that out of it. So if you were to compare this to any other standard direct blowback, you have a little bit softer of a recoil. Uh, is it that critical? No. Is it a nice benefit? Yes. So this is one of the neat features and B&T puts this on pretty much all of their, their guns where it's 308, 223. So this is really a, a big deal for as far as enhancing uh, the recoil. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the bolt. We're going to remove the recoil spring. And with leaving the charging handles forward, we're going to slide the bolt back 
just until it hits this little notch position we have right here. Then we're going to drive that pin right out, locking pin, and now the bolt will slide right out the back. Now this is as far as you do your disassembly. Now looking at the bolt, you can see large chunk of steel, and uh, this is what impacts right back here. That's basically is coming from the back of the the spring goes up here, and the bolt directly is impacting on the back right here to decelerate that. And it's pretty much as far as you want to go. You can remove the firing pin if you so choose, but it's not really necessary. It's a good spring-loaded firing pin. If you do decide to take the bolt apart, make sure that you put that spring back in. That spring is absolutely necessary. If you don't have that in, because pistol primers are extremely soft, this thing could go full auto uncontrollably on you by slam fire. So you always got to make sure that you have that spring in. Now taking a look at the receiver. Now again, this is what you're paying for with, with uh, the Swiss. You have an extremely well-made you can see no, you see no machining marks. Everything is put together very well. We can see our ejector and we see our barrel. So that's really all there is to it. And again, very, very beautifully made. The optic that was chosen on here is a Trigicon MRO. This is an ideal optic for this pistol. Submachine, I know, however, whatever, depending on what model you have. You have uh, six positions on here. And also when you engage your backup sights, you have 100% co-witness, which is very important because anytime you're messing with optics that have electronics, you need to have an immediate backup in case those batteries go out at an opportune time. So for reassembly, first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the bolt back in. Now we're going to push the bolt back in so it reaches just that position so we can drop our pin back in. Let's drop back in, let the bolt go forward. Now we insert our recoil spring with the large end in the rear. Now we drop in our, our stock in there first and we push it in place. It'll lock right back into place. Now we put our two pins back in. Make sure that we're good to go. We're going to do a function check. Put safety on. Pull the trigger. Nothing happens. Put it on fire. Hear the click. Hold the trigger to the rear. Should hear a click. Pull the trigger again. We're good to go. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to range and we're going to see how it shoots. Now, as you can see from the videos, it never locked back on the last shot. Accuracy was excellent. As you can see from the target, we had a very, very nice group. When we were shooting our challenge targets at uh, 25 yards, we had no problem hitting uh, right where we were aiming with it. If you're interested in the steel targets, you can go take a look at the challenge target webpage. Uh, you can get 10% off of any steel target using our code SAS. Uh, we've been using them uh, you know, for the past uh, several months, and we absolutely love it. Uh, we very rarely even use uh, paper anymore unless we we're trying to get some groups, but it's a, it's a lot more fun using the steel. Now, as far as ammunition is concerned, we use several different kinds of ammunition uh, for function testing. Majority of it, we want to thank our friends over at Copper Customs for with this Oskarsan uh, Turkish ammunition. Um, as you guys know, ammunition has been extremely difficult to get a hold of over the last year or so. And if we don't have ammunition, we can't uh, bring you content. So uh, Copper Customs has been generous enough to donate some ammunition for us uh, so we can continue our work. This is a 124 grain bullet out of Turkey. It's a full metal jacket and the cartridge case is steel, but it has a, like a brass coating on it. Um, and it's been 100% reliable to everything that we put through it. Copper's bringing these in by the million rounds a month, I think uh, they were saying over there. So if you're looking for some inexpensive uh, 9mm ammunition, give Copper Custom a call uh, and ask for the Oscarson uh, 9mm FMJ. 
Uh, for as far as hollow points were concerned, we tried some of the SIG hollow points. We tried some of the federal uh, hollow points, and they all function uh, quite nicely in here. You know, overall, it's a very, very well-made gun. Uh, I would definitely recommend against uh, the Glock uh, frame. I would get the standard frame uh, for the uh, proprietary B&T straight stick magazine, which is what the U.S. government's using, um, or even the SIG P320. Even the SIG P320, you won't have a problem with uh, the mags locking back in the last shot. Again, it's just everybody wants to use Glock magazines uh, because, you know, how common Glock pistols are. But the problem is, is there is no PCC out there that I've ever seen that had a reliable uh, lockback on the last shot using Glock magazines. So uh, I would take a look at the other magazines. As we, as we said, this was adopted by the U.S. government. There was a uh, solicitation that came out for a new submachine gun, and all the big boys were in it. Uh, you, had, you had the MPX, you had CZ, you had uh, LMT even put one in there that was based off of a, a 9 millimeter pattern. And this was the one that was selected. Now, I have no information on why it was selected over any, anybody else's. Um, it could be uh, what the cost they had. It could have been, I mean, as far as reliability is concerned, this is not any more or less reliable than any of the ones that were out there. Uh, it could have been a size requirement. There's any number of things it could have been. But the contract was uh, for uh, 350 with option to build 1,000. And again, the Air Force to procure some as well. So very nice weapon. If your wallet can afford it uh, and you can afford the MSRP of $2,385, this is an excellent option for you. As I said, for, for reliability and everything, there's other ones that can do it a hell of a lot cheaper, just as reliable. But if you really do appreciate the, the fine machining, uh, this is an excellent option. But keep in mind, uh, if it comes to spare parts, are you going to be able to get them? That's something you really have to ask yourself uh, anytime you look for something overseas, especially now in our current political situation. So I do hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share.